respected animal. Like, uh -huh. yes, Miss, like before I see many movies and many uh, documentaries, they always has an elephant. Because like, I think if uh, forest called the mother nature of the earth, uh, elephant is the mother nature of the animal. Because oh. like, <laughs> they, they are, they are also uh, being uh, critically damaged now. They are taken the, the this what is this? Yeah, the, their trunks. Yeah, I think because they're being many, hunted for for yes, their trunks. Yes, yes, yes. Right? And for the longest yet, time, even even yes. through uh, even during the ancient times, they were hunted for their for their tusks. They're called yes. tusks. Yes. How could this affect you in any way, guys? Like. If you think about it, what do you like, care about elephants? Aside from what Winner said, that's wonderful, Winner. Thank you. Thank you. Like, yeah. That's that's like the uh, one of the greatest magnificent animals. If, yes. Right. Yes. That's what you're yes. saying. I agree. In, yes. In, in what in what way, way could it affect you? Like if I just imagine if there are no elephants in the world left. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Just imagine. You guys, can you imagine a world without elephants? Just seeing it in pictures. By the way, have you seen one in person? Yes. You have? And how yeah. did it feel? Uh, I felt small. Yeah. Okay, and what, how, how? Can you elaborate on that? You felt small. Uh, it was a time back when I went to Thailand, and it, uh, it was like a show, like a elephant show. Yeah. And we got some time to take pictures with the elephant, and it actually wrapped its trunk around me, and it picked yeah. me up. I was quite scared, but like, I was quite, I was quite scared it was gonna like release me in the air. I was just really so scared. Yeah. But That's like, scary. once we get used to it, it's okay, I guess so. Okay. And it made you feel small and helpless, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, they're so gonna, big. Yeah, it's so big. If you think about it, you know, you don't just think of, of things simply. Like, there are bigger things out there. There are things that are bigger than you, and you're not the, the center of the world. Isn't that, isn't that a good thought? Like, if you think about it, it's like, it's always about me, 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 me. But if there are things like this that will make us realize that, we're not the center of the world. Okay, I heard this from yesterday. I heard this. I heard Fernanda saying this yesterday. You should care more about social issues, guys. Okay, don't just like, I don't care. I don't have any opinion on that. Try to care more. Okay, just like right now, I'm just asking for your opinion. I'm just like asking for your thoughts. So thank you, Isadora and Steven, for sharing your thoughts. I hope. The others could be more open about this because I like us to be more um, open in discussion. Okay. Okay. All right. So, guys, um, I, I forgot to tell you yesterday that uh, for today's lesson, we will be uh, using the extract from last week's activity. Touching the void, if you remember. Okay, just give me a minute here. Okay, this one, this activity from yesterday, uh, from last week, we're going to be using this today. So I hope you can, I forgot to tell you to print it out. Okay, because it's easier when you print it out when we do annotation and stuff, when we do text analysis. So since I forgot to tell you, I hope uh, you have your notebooks there to take notes, to take down notes. And if you can, please have a separate um, gadget or separate, separate device so you could um, filter, uh, sorry, not filter, so you could uh, check the text while we are in discussion. Okay, so let's go back to that later.
Right. So for today's for today's activity or for today's lesson uh, will be we'll be having lesson number four. Okay, like what I said, we're going to be using the uh, text from last week. So lesson number four is about reading nonfiction, in spe uh, specifically descriptive writing. So what you have read last week is an example of descriptive writing. So I'm sure you have encountered descriptive writing before. Yes. Yes. Have you ever written one? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm sure you have written one and you've encountered one. Because descriptive writing is really all over the place. Like everyone, I mean, you, we can find this anywhere. Okay. So we'll be delving in deeper into what descriptive writing is, especially in nonfiction. Okay. So our, in, in this lesson, here are our objectives. We will consider what descriptive writing is. I'm sure you know, but we'll be, we'll be uh, recalling. And then we will be reading a range of passages which contain descriptive writing. And the first one that we will be, will be uh, analyzing and reading is touching the void extract from last week's activity. And most importantly, we will be exploring a range of features which are typical of much descriptive writing. Why is this important? Okay, why do we need to explore? Why do we need to analyze these features? Okay, so um, just like in most of our lessons in text analysis, we will, we will be exploring the techniques the writer use so we can appreciate the work behind it. And also, we could emulate it when we are the ones who are supposed to write this, script, uh, this type of writing. Okay, so emulate meaning. What does emulate mean? Explain. Explain. Em nice try. Well, what does emulate? Emulate mean? Anyone? Okay, so just so you know, yeah, again, jot this down in your vocabulary notebook. Emulate means, I think we've, we've encountered this before, follow as an example. Okay, when you emulate someone or something, you're following it as an example. So that's why this objective is very important. In exploring the range of features of descriptive writing, we will be able to emulate the techniques the writer use in descriptive writing. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. All right. So first, descriptive writing. What is descriptive writing for you? Describing something. Thank you. Very good. That's basically it. It's describing something. What else? How do you know that what you're reading is descriptive writing? The writer will usually use specific words to describe stuff. What are those specific words, Nisha? Uh, such as adjectives. Okay, thank you. Very good. So structurally speaking, you will see a lot of adjectives. Okay, because adjectives are words that describe, right? Okay, so adjectives. Anything else? Anything else? So basically, that's what you know about descriptive writing, right? It describes something and it uses a lot of adjectives. And that's what you do when you are doing descriptive writing yourself. But did you know that descriptive writing is also a catch-all term for many forms and types of text? What do we mean by saying catch-all term? Any guesses? What does catch all mean? Marshall, want to try?
I don't know, miss. Okay, it's fine. Gio, how about you? Gio, where are you? Yes, miss. Okay, what do you think catch all term means? Catch all. Catch all. I don't know to this. <laughs> I try to try to think. Okay, just just what could it mean? Rainer, how about you? Hello? Rainer, can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to go back to Rainer later on. Chelsea, how about you? What do you think catch all means? Uh, to capture everything in one go. Capture every... Okay, nice try. Very good. Capture everything in one go. Although in this case, in this case, what does that mean? Descriptive writing captures everything? Uh, yeah, descriptive writing catches uh, many different kinds of themes and uh, styles uh, and different text styles. Text styles or text. In, in a single time. Okay, very good. Or text types. Or to put it simply, you can find descriptive writing in, diff in, in many different forms of text. You know, you could find it in... It's okay, Rainer. All right, you can find it in... Where do you think you could find a, a des descriptive writing? Where do you usually... Okay, you said that you have encountered descriptive writing before. What type of text is it? Or maybe the purpose, not the type of text. How about topic? What's the topic of the descriptive writing that you've read from before? Rack your brains, come on. Um, maybe in travel magazines because descriptive writing usually uses like words that relate to our five senses. Okay, nice. Very good, Isadora. Anything else? What's the topic that, of descriptive writing that you have encountered before? Steven, winner. Yes, miss. Uh, descriptive writing about uh, to describe uh, to describe a uh, scenery or to describe something more detailed. Scenery. 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 Yes, uh -huh. scenery. Okay, so travel scenery. also, that's the topic. Tra travel, yes. Okay. Yes. How about you, Erin's? Erin's? Have you read descriptive writing before? Yes. What's the topic? Uh, a lot, Miss. I don't recall all of them. <laughs> Just recall one. The scenery of the beach. Ah, okay. The scenery. So mostly about places, describing places. Have you ever read a descriptive writing about a person? Describing a person, a really important person in history, yes. let's say. Okay, what could that be? Biography. What type of text is that? What? Biography. Oh, very good. Biography. So not just travel, you could find it also in a biography. Right? Have you ever heard, I have you ever read descriptive writing in a novel? Yes. Like describing a setting, right? Yeah. Okay. So you cannot just, you can't just find it in travel, in biography. You could also find it in a novel. So that's what it means by catch all. You can find it in many forms and types of text. Understood? Got it, guys? Yes, miss. All right. So how do we know if it's descriptive writing, if you can find it in many forms and types of text? Well, all descriptive writing share same conventions and features. If not the same, very similar. 
okay? Conventions and features. And that's what we will be exploring today. What are the conventions and features that all descriptive writing share? What's conventions, miss? Conventions, like, um, like rules, okay? Like uh, guidelines. Okay. Okay, so descriptive writing features. Guys, you don't need to take note of this, yeah, because I will be posting this PowerPoint. But for the sake of discussion today, at least take down, I take note of the keywords. Okay, keywords. I've highlighted it for you. So descriptive writing often tries to create a very particular or vivid mood or atmosphere. What do we mean by vivid? Guys, you're allowed to use your dictionary if you don't if you don't know. Come on, you all have you, you have the resources with you. All the resources you have right there. Yeah. You have the internet at the tip of your fingertips. Cool. Producing uh, producing powerful feelings or strong, clear images in the mind. Okay, strong, clear image in the mind. Okay, that's, that's what you need to take note of. Vivid, strong and clear image. So a descriptive writing or a good descriptive writing will give you a vivid mood. Mood meaning how you feel, right? Or atmosphere, the environment, how it feels like. Okay? Mm. So that's how you know that it is descriptive writing. What else? Okay? A descriptive writing conveys a strong sense of individual settings, people, events, or experiences. Okay? Again, strong sense of setting. We know setting, right? What is setting? Vicky, what is setting? In narrative, in narrative text, what is setting? The first element of a narrative. Guys, you forgot. Christabel, did you do you remember what setting is? Eileen, do you remember? Um, like uh, background of the story. Sorry. The background of the text. Background, background. Okay, you're almost there. Nice try. Celine, what is setting? Uh, Celine just told me that her Wi-Fi is kind of lagging. Mm hmm. So, Celine, can you understand our discussion for today if your Wi-Fi is lagging? Justin CL, what is setting? Like the place where it happens. Yes. Not just place, but also... Time. Time. Okay. Remember, yeah, setting is time and place. Where the story happened. Okay? Just like Eileen uh, uh, said, it's like the background. Okay? So similar. So remember, setting is time and place. So descriptive writing will give you a good description. A strong sense of the setting, the time and place. And you can imagine it in your head. Where, 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 what kind of place it is, what kind of time it is. Clear? Yes. People, we move as, as we're moving on. Um, strong sense of people, so describing certain persons, events, or experiences. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. Next, anyone who would like to read this? Rainer, are you back? Rainer, I think you're. Her, his internet is kind of slow, so I'm not. 
I'm not um, forcing you to turn on your video. But are you there, Rainer? Rainer. Okay, somebody contact Rainer. Okay, anyone who would like to read the next one? Vincentius. Yes. Focuses focuses in on detail but can also zoom out to our two overviews and panoramas. Okay, so good descriptive writing. Some people or some good writers can do this. Okay, not maybe not beginners, but some good writers can do this. Like just like when you're watching a movie, guys, when you're watching a film, the camera would zoom into a certain object, right? Yes. So imagine that in writing. So yeah. giving you the detail of that certain object, right? But not only that, it can also zoom out, overview. Like panorama. In camera, in a camera or in a film, it's easy to see that. But imagine that in writing. Yes. So it, he would be describing the place, the, I mean, the atmosphere, the skies, the mountains, probably like that. I'm just guessing. I'm just giving you some examples. Okay. So zoom in and zoom out. And last but not least, I would like someone to read this. Let's have um, Justin. Yes, miss. Read, read the last one. Uh, trust on a range of sensory experiences such as taste, sight, sound, touch, and smell. Okay, I forgot to highlight taste. So thank you, Justin. Just like what Isadora told us earlier, sensory experiences. Descriptive writing, usually, this is like the easiest and the most used by writers. Okay? And the easiest one to emulate. Appealing to the senses of your readers. Giving your readers sensory experiences. So talking about what it tastes like, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like and what it smells like. So taste, sight, sound, touch, and smell. Okay? So these are some of the most common features of descriptive writing. So let's just enumerate one more time, yeah? One more time. Enumerate all. First, Let's see if you took down notes. <laughs> First. Vivid. Yep. Vivid what? Vivid bright. Vivid mood and a toy. Vivid mood. Okay, thank you. Vivid Very mood. good. What else? Focuses on sense of individual self. All right, Victoria first. Victoria, Brittany. Sense of individual settings, people, events, or experience. Nice. Okay, Lisha, what were you saying? Uh, focuses on details, something, something, panorama. <laughs> details, focus on details, and but can also... <laughs> Detail is, is zoom in. But it can also be zoom out. Zoom out. Panorama. Okay? So that's your to make to to make it easier for you to remember, just remember zoom in and zoom out. Okay? What else? Last one. What's the last one? It's the last one you should remember. How poor is your memory, guys? I'm sorry. Yes, thank you, Vincentius. Again? 
sensory experience. Okay, Vincentius, you're you're banned to answer this time uh, for five minutes. Ouch. All right. So to continue with our discussion, just like what I said earlier, a descriptive writing is a catch-all term for many types of text, right? For example, you can find it in a personal account of an incident from an expedition. These are just some examples, yeah? Not all the time, just some examples. Personal accounts, okay? Or you can find it in an advert for a city and its key attractions on a tourist website. Okay, this is similar to what Isadora gave us an example. Or you could find it in, please read this one, uh, Angelica. Diary entry describing the attendance at the World Cup match. Okay, can you imagine how good of a writer can you be if you can make your reader imagine that Imagine them attending the World Cup match. Right? Rainer, you're back. Read this one. Well, at first. This one, this one. Fictional description of a memorable character. Okay. So it could be in fiction or it could also not be in fiction. All right, so basically we're doing description of memorable characters. So if it's in fiction, it could be in a novel or a short story of a character. But if it's not in fiction, it could be in a... Justin C.L.? This one. Hello, hello. What piece? <laughs> I'm just asking you to read. Which one? Were you paying attention? No, it was kind of lacking me. So the oh, no. voice is. Everyone saying that, you guys. Okay. So this one, please, Justin TL. Biography, historical event. Okay, you could find it in a biography or historical event. And the last one, Jesslyn, please read this. News report natural disaster such as tsunami. Okay, you can even find it in a news report. See, that's what that's how descriptive writing is such a catch all term. Catch all. Okay, is this clear? Any questions? Any questions, guys? No, miss. All right. So, oh my God, I'm low. I, oh no. All right. So we're going to go back to this one, to this passage, Touching the Void by Joe Simpson. So I, I told you, please, if you can have a separate device for the extract and that you will be rereading this later because we will be analyzing this passage okay so this passage touching the void is where the writer builds a detailed and evocative picture of the environment by focusing on three particular things okay first of all one of the questions in our activity is where or what kind of adventure was the writer in? What was he describing? Mountains. Mountains. Okay, where was what? What was he in? What kind of adventure was he in? He was in a uh, hiking. I guess. Okay, hiking a hiking trip. trip. Hiking, hiking trip. Hiking. Okay, a hiking. Actually, not just can you call it hiking? Um, uh, camping. Oh no. Camp okay. All right. I, I accept both uh, all of those ants. Hiking or camping okay. or mountain climbing trip. I mountain think climbing. the most okay. appropriate or the most accurate for this one is mountain climbing. Mountain climbing. Okay. Okay. Because hiking so is sort of like um, like 
more recreational or more easy i mean easier right? oh yes yes miss. yes if i'm not mistaken well i don't know that mm -hmm. much. all right so he was describing his you know one of one of the days in his experience in this mountain mountain climbing adventure and the writer builds a detailed and evocative picture yeah evocative meaning oh here's another one another word for you evocative evocative angelina karen could you use your dictionary please and tell everyone what evocative means Focative is relating to our case nouns, pronouns, and adjectives in Latin or any other language. Okay, can you can you find another definition? I'm sure there's one more. What's the other definition? Use for nouns. Hmm? Okay, if you Google evocative, here's the meaning. This is descriptive, right? So you could guess what evocative means. Evocative means bringing strong images, memories, or feelings to mind. Okay, so if something is powerly evocative, it makes you remember stuff, okay? It makes you imagine strong images. It makes you feel something, strong feelings. So that's what evocative means. So thank you, Karen, Angelina Karen. So going back to our discussion, Going back to our discussion, the writer built details, an evocative picture of the environment. Okay, he's in a camping trip, he's in a hiking trip, by focusing on three particular things. Okay, what are those three things? The world inside the tent, the world outside the tent, and his actions as he wakes and prepares the tea. Okay, so for this activity, I want you to reread the passage and divide, divide, yeah, divide the passage into those three things, three parts, wherein the writer describes the world inside the tent and then the world outside the tent and when he was describing his action, when he woke up and he was preparing the tea. Okay, if we were in class, I would ask you to do this by group or by pair, but unfortunately, we're doing this via Zoom, so you're going to have to do this by yourself. Okay, but I'm allowing you to discuss things here at Zoom. You could, you could talk or you could talk to each other and you could ask each other, but just remember you, could, you should speak in English. Okay, so I want you to reread. I think it will be enough. 10 minutes is enough to read it one more time. And then we will identify the three parts inside the tent, outside the tent, and his actions when he was preparing the tea. Can you do that?
Okay, so 10 minutes, yeah. Guys, I'll be right back. I will just get my charger for my device, okay? So 10 minutes, please reread the passage. Can I exit the share screen? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Have, you no have you taken notes of this? These three things? Yeah, only yeah, I remember MS. We later describe MS. Um, just divide it first, and then we will analyze together the description. Okay. What what the writer uh, did? Where do we find the passage, Miss? In the in the Google post, Google Classroom post. I don't think there is. Is there? It is. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit. Wait, yeah. Oh, this is rating exercise. Okay, okay. Yeah, that one. Okay, thank you, miss.